A Columbia University senior will carry a mattress wherever she goes every day until the man she says raped her leaves campus. I was raped in my own dorm bed. A mattress is the perfect size for me to just be able to carry it enough that I can continue with my day but also heavy enough that I have to continually struggle with it. This is part of her senior thesis, a performance art piece called Carry That Weight. Emma Sulkowitz says she was raped by a classmate on the first day of her sophomore year and that her case was improperly handled by the university. In May, she told Time her complaints about her school, saying employees working on her case weren't trained. I don't actually get to write a statement of what happened. It's all the investigator's statement that they read. Since her statement didn't make any sense, my case didn't make any sense. To me, it's an endurance performance art piece. In this performance art piece, it utilizes elements of protest um, because I think that is relevant to my life right now um, and definitely the way I've been thinking about and dealing with various issues. For the most part, I'll be explaining how the piece works by word of mouth. Um, but then I think the rules of engagement, if people are interested, can they can look at it and get a fuller explanation of how the piece works. Um, I will be using my studio in Watson Hall for my senior thesis as a part of the piece, um, where I will be writing the rules of engagement on the wall. So people can come see those parts of the performance and also read the rules of engagement if they're interested. I think the other thing about beds is that they're, we keep them in our bedroom, which is like our intimate space, our private space, where we can retreat if we don't want to deal with anyone at that moment. It's really all of our burden to carry. It's not just the uh, primary victims, it's also secondary victims, it's the families, it's the friends, there's people who are close and they have to deal with, you know, supporting these people who have been affected directly by sexual violence. And it's, it's very difficult, so it's all of our way to carry. Honestly, I'm not as nervous about carrying a mattress around as I am with the attention that it's gotten. I'm not really going to have anonymity anymore, which is a really strange thing to think about. I think yes means yes and no means no. It's pretty simple to me. I think. We need things like that out here more because everyone, you know, there's kind of this whole, oh no, there was a miscommunication, or oh, she was flirting, no really means yes, and maybe really means yes, or whatever. I don't agree with that. I think that's crap. <laughs> the idea to do at Penn State started um, probably around a month ago. Um, so school started here, and I, I'm assuming school started at Columbia, and we saw other schools, while Columbia did collective carries, other schools did it with their own students. Whereas at Columbia, they started to help Emma carry her own mattress. Um, because she couldn't ask for help, and that was part of her thesis. But people offered to help, and they would come up to her classes and help her. 
So um, I want to do the same thing at Penn State. I wanted to carry um, my own mattress or have someone else bring their own mattress and do it here. And I think it's very meaningful I mean, be, me, for me to be able to carry my own mattress. This was the mattress I had when I lived off campus when my second assault happened. So I told them I was never going to sleep in it again. Um, and for a while I didn't. For about two months after I slept on my friend's futon um, all the time. That's all I did was sleep and cry. But I didn't want to like be afraid. I didn't want to be a victim. I wanted to be a victor about it. Sulkowitz's school, Columbia, is also being sued by students who were accused of assault and say their cases were mishandled. I don't, you know, have the energy for this anymore. Like I'm already like so sick of everything. I just wanted to put it behind me and it just constantly like everything in my soul like sent me back like every day and like I couldn't move past it. It was just like haunting and it was heavy. It was so heavy. The most difficult thing has just been the emotional trauma of having But having that happen to you, having someone hurt you in that way, is, it's unbelievable.
you have pictures of this? victim of sexual assault. I remember people bringing her project up in conversation and people questioning the validity of her accusations. Sometimes I just wanted to get away from the constant reminder of what happened to me, but people didn't check in before bringing it up even in casual conversation. Glad someone was brave enough to take a stand against rape culture in such a loud way. I will never forget this movement. Columbia didn't comment for the story, but we should note that according to Time, the university now requires two people to be present when alleged victims share their stories. Solkowitz is also one of 23 students from Columbia and neighboring Barnard College who have filed a federal complaint alleging the university hasn't properly addressed sexual assault cases on campus. just saying it, but acting in a way that makes that true. Our case was closed, there was nothing that was going to happen, and we really supported the work that Senator Gillibrand was doing about campus rape, and knew that it would be valuable to keeping our classmates safe. And it just kind of landed on me that I would be the one to come forward. And I think about how many hands go into the making of a woman. 
holding her, hugging her, feeding her, helping her get dressed. I just thought of how many people it takes to make a woman. That like some really careless man could completely desecrate all that labor. I believe in like being that person to raise your hand in class and say, no, this is a misogynist text. Being the person in the conversation to, in, to cut off someone and be like, that's racist, please stop. having to stop denying my anger and sadness. I was going to do something about this because I was hurt. Ceci n'est pas un viol is not about one night in August 2012. It's about your decisions starting now. It's only a reenactment if you disregard my words. It's about you, not him. Do not watch this video if your motives would upset me, my desires are unclear to you, or my nuances are indecipherable. You might be wondering why I've made myself this vulnerable. Look, I want to change the world, and that begins with you, seeing yourself. If you watch this video without my consent, then I hope you reflect on your reasons for objectifying me and participating in my rape. For in that case, you were the one who couldn't resist the urge to make Ceci n'est pas un viol about what you wanted to make it about, rape. Please don't participate in my rape. Watch kindly. Here are a few questions to help you reflect. Searching. Are you searching for proof? Proof of what? Are you searching for ways to either hurt or help me? What are you looking for? Desiring. Do you desire pleasure? Do you desire revulsion? Is this to counteract your unconscious enjoyment? What do you want from this experience? Me. How well do you think you know me? Have we ever met? Do you think I'm the perfect victim or the world's worst victim? Do you refuse to see me as either a human being or a victim? If so, why? Is it to deny me agency and thus further victimize me? If so, what do you think of the fact that you owe your ability to do so to me, since I'm the one who took a risk and made myself vulnerable in the first place? Do you hate me? If so, how does it feel to hate me?